Hey, hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and in this video we are going to draw the most beautiful and elegant cherry blossoms in Procreate. So open up the app and let's get started. So obviously the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new canvas. So here are the dimensions of the canvas that I am using, but you can use pretty much any dimension depending on your needs for your own specific project. The reasons I'm using these dimensions is because I am painting in a pre-textured file that comes with some of my brushes. You can see it has this really cool watercolor paper texture. You can still follow along though, even though you don't have this file. It is totally okay. Don't worry about it. The first thing we're going to do, well, the second thing is we actually already created a canvas. So the second thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer that we're going to rename to Sketch. And on this layer, um, we're going to change the blending mode to Multiply. In this sketch, we're not going to have in the end, so the color doesn't really matter, but I like sketching with the same pink that I'm going to be drawing my flowers in. And I'm going to be using the coloring pencil that comes with my watercolor brushes. And if you want to check them out, as usual, they will be linked in the description below, along with a special code for the YouTube people. But if you don't have them, that is totally fine. I'm going to recommend other brushes that come with Procreate throughout the entire tutorial. So for sketching, you could use the HB pencil. That would totally work. And you're just going to sketch the rough shape you want to have for your branch so it could be just like an l shape it could be a circle for read it could be a curve um, and that's what i'm going to go with just a simple curved branch but you could go as elaborate as you want or as simple as you want and this sketch you're going to do something super quick and rough because as i was saying we're not going to see in the end we're just kind of basically mapping out where things are going to be starting with the branch because that's kind of the base of everything and then I like adding kind of circles for where the flowers are going to be. I start with just circles and not necessarily the petals themselves, just so I can kind of see where the different masses are going to be and create a nice composition. So I highly recommend you do that as well. And once you're happy with the way the branch and flower interacts together, we're going to zoom in a little bit and add some of the details. So I like to add some leaves, that's totally optional. And if you want to draw leaves, I recommend that you draw some really thin pointy leaves in groups of two to five, I would say. And they can be really cool to add a pop of color. And they also can kind of uh, fill in the gaps a little bit because if you're just drawing the branch and the flowers, it is, it is a really nice look as well, but it can be a little bit bare. And I want it to feel like it's spring, it's colorful, it's vibrant. You can also finish this by adding little flower buds. So just little circles of flowers that are not blossomed yet. That can be a really nice touch before moving in and adding the actual petals to the flowers. Speaking of the petals, sakuras have five petals per flower and they tend to be kind of pointy towards the center and then round towards the outside edge so keep that in mind and you might want to try and have some flowers that you can see that are totally open and you might want to try and also have some flowers that are kind of either angled in a different way so you don't see the center you just kind of see the sides or that are not fully blossomed yet so not fully open yet you can see here i'm drawing a flower where i'm just kind of seeing two or three of the petals and the other one are kind of hidden behind so having a variety between flowers that you know you see the five petals super well that kind of overlap together a little bit but it's mostly fully open and also flowers that are not fully open is going to really make your piece look so much better than if the flowers were all fully open in the same stage and pointing in the same direction that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you think about it Great, so once your sketch looks a little bit like this, you don't need to have anything more precise than that at all. Go ahead and create a new layer, and on this one, we're going to start adding the colors. So you can rename it to whatever you want. I'm going to rename it to flowers. And this is really where we're going to start laying the colors down, but in a super loose way. Again, you don't want to be too precise here. I'm going to use the Dark Edges watercolor brush, but if you don't have the watercolor brushes, go ahead and select in the airbrushing panel the hard brush. And you can then lower the opacity uh, with the slider here on the left or the right, depending on your interface. And you can see you're going to get some of this watercolor overlay effect. You're not going to get any texture, but it's better than nothing. Okay, so that being said, anyway, whichever brush you're using, we're just going to start by placing the colors. And here you don't want to be too precise because we're going to end up blending everything together anyway. So you just kind of want to add some blobs of colors. The way I personally like to do it is I like to kind of fill in one half of the petal and then add a few little spikes or strokes um, in the other half. 
So make sure you peek at the video if you want to really understand what I say. But basically one half of the petal is fell in color and then I just add some random other strokes in the other half. And you're gonna notice really quickly, whenever you lift your pencil and start a new stroke, you'll be able to create overlays, so the color is just gonna get darker and more intense. So you can definitely use that. Here I like to use it to kind of overlay on the, the edge that is already colored, so just adding a little bit more color on the very end of the petal, if that makes any sense. Uh, but just, just play with it, there's no, there's no real rule here. For the flowers that are not fully open yet or are in the different angle, I like to fully color the petals that are kind of in the back and then just uh, show basically the bottom of the flower by adding some sort of a little V shape in the bottom of the petals. And then I like to go back and overlay the back petals where they kind of connect with the front petals. So make sure to peek at the video again, but that's just what I like to do. You can experiment and do something totally different as well. And again, here at this step, you don't need to be precise, you just want to lay down the basic color. Keep in mind that the center of the flowers tend to be more colorful and the outside edges tend to be lighter and almost white sometimes. So you can definitely kind of play with that idea. And also keep in mind that we're going to go back and although we're going to hide the sketch, we're going to go back and add details including some very thin and pale outlines. So it is okay to leave parts of your flower totally white because we're going to come back in the end and add outlines and it's just going to look so much better if you actually leave parts white and open just like this. So once you have your main flowers, go ahead and just fill in parts of the buds with just one blob of color. Nothing complicated here, we just want to show that they exist. <laughs> And you can also change your paint color a little bit to make it a little bit more purple. Still super bright and super light. And you can kind of focus on the center of the flower. Like I was saying, usually the center is the, the part of the flower that has the most color to it. So you can just add a little bit of color variation really quickly um, this way. Great! So now we should be ready to move on to the branch. I'd like to create a new layer just so I can move it around or change the color of it really easily later, but you could paint on the same layer as your flowers, that's totally fine. And you can pick whichever color you want. I like to go with a brown because, I mean, that's that's classic, but if you want, you can, you can do something else. <laughs> and with your same brush, you're going to just simply draw the branch. And again, here we want to use the overlay effect to our advantage. So I like to draw the branch in kind of little sections uh, without lifting my pencil. Well, I mean, I lift the pencil between the sections, but in one section I like to just do it in one stroke. And then going back in to add kind of the shadow and the texture uh, using this overlay. And don't forget the little secondary branches and don't forget connecting your flower to the actual main branch, that is very important. Once you have your branch, we're going to add the leaves. Again, I'm creating a new layer just because that's how I work, but you could draw on the same layer as these flowers. That's that's fine as well. And for the leaves, I recommend going with a bright, vibrant green that is a bit more yellow than it would be blue. And yeah, for the leaves, what I like to do is just color the shape once and then fill in with the overlay half of the leaf again. So you're going to see here in my example that is exactly what I do and that just adds a lot of dimension but it's super simple. So color blocking one block the entire leaf and then coming in over and just overlaying one half. And guys, if you've made it this far in the video, please go and comment below the word Sakura. I know it sounds crazy, but it really helps me. It gives me some really good insight into how to pace my videos, basically, which helps me create better tutorials for you. And it's also really cool for me because you guys know me, but I have no idea who you are. And when you comment, I get to at least see your username and your picture. And it's really nice to see the little community that we've been building over the last few months. So go ahead and comment the word Sakura in the comments below, obviously. And let's get going. So at this point, you might want to lower the opacity of your sketch so we can just barely see it. And we're going to start blending stuff. So for that, you can either use the smudge tool and setting it to the soft brush from the airbrushing panel. Or if you have the watercolor brushes, go ahead and just select the water blender. That's going to be even better. And this is a brush that you actually set your brush tool to, not the smudge tool. And then you're going to go and select your flower layer and you're just going to smudge those weird 
blobs that we've created. So we're kind of using this smudge tool to fill in the rough uh, sketch of the petal that we've created. And that's really how you're going to get super cool watercolor effect. It doesn't have to be precise. Again, here we're just going to go in with a like final sketch outline deal a bit later uh, which is really going to pull in everything together and make everything look good so at this point all you want is just to kind of blend in the digital looking overlays and just create a really nice smooth watercolor feel on your flower petals and depending on the look you're after you might want to do this on your branch as well so just selecting your branch layer and then smoothing in the overlay however it might look good as well because this overlay here on the branch can kind of look like the bark of the tree so you could just leave it like that as well great so once everything is blended in and you notice i am not blending in these leaves because i love this little overlay effect here i think it just looks really cool you could blend them in if you want but i highly recommend you don't but anyway once you have everything except the leaves blended in, go ahead and hide your sketch and create a new layer and on this layer we're going to draw the famous details that are going to bring everything together and make everything look so good you're going to change the blending mode of this layer to multiply and for now we're going to leave the opacity 100 but later we're going to go back and um, make it lighter and you're going to pick the same brush that you use for your sketch and you're also going to go back to your pink and you're just going to outline your petals and you can see here i'm kind of just going off script basically i am not necessarily following exactly the shape that i laid out for the watercolor i might kind of overlap a little bit and you see here i just kind of made a mistake i went with my secondary pink instead of the main pink so i'm just going to change that real quick there we go but yeah really you're just kind of drawing the ideal shape you want your petals to be disregarding the actual watercolor below it so you're going to have some points when you're going to overlap like i was saying but you're also going to have some parts where there's actually like just a white area that you kind of imagine to be the petal but there's actually no color there i don't know if i'm making sense right now but if you look at the results here on my screen or uh what i'm filming actually it looks pretty cool and once you have your first flower done, you can then go in and lower the opacity of your layer quite a lot, probably around, you know, 50% or something like that, so that you can just barely see the outline, but it is still there. And you can also add little lines like you can see here, starting from the middle and shooting uh, outwards. That adds a lot of texture in your flower and that's super cute, super nice. It, it just makes the piece feel a bit more polished and finished and interesting in the end. And yeah, you're basically just going to do that on all of your flowers. So at this point, feel free to pause the video here and go and take all the time you need to do it. And I'm going to meet you at the next step, which is going to be to outline the branch and the leaves. And I'm going to give you a few tips for, for those two things as well. Wonderful. So once you have all your flowers nicely outlined and textured, go ahead and select the green that you use for your leaves. And on the same details layer, you're just going to outline the darkest part of your leaf. So if you remember, what I did is I overlaid just one half of the leaf and this is exactly what I'm going to outline. And that way you just get this really interesting detailing on the piece and it feels even more like watercolor. It's kind of like the watercolor pigments kind of bled in the paper and got darker on the edges. So that's my little pro tip for the leaves. And the branch is also incredibly simple. You just have to go back to your brown and again, you're going to outline probably both edges of your branch but one thing you might want to do is to kind of use this detail layer to add a shadow below the flower so you can see here i'm just kind of sketching really roughly and that's going to help your flowers really contrast well with the branch and it's just going to make the whole piece pop a little bit more and at this point we're almost done but i'm going to show you a few tips of how to make this look even more watercolor and even more interesting so make sure you stick around until the end the first tip is to go back on your flower layer and with the selection tool set to freehand, draw a wobbly shape, random shape, and then feather this shape somewhere around 15 to 20 percent. Then from your adjustment panel in the hue saturation and brightness um, option, go ahead and lower the brightness and up the saturation. You might want to shift the hue a little bit, uh, nothing too crazy, but this is going to add some really nice color variation and soft gradients in your piece, which just makes it feel a bit more like watercolor. 
You can do the same thing on the leaves. So taking the selection tool, set it to freehand, draw a random shape and feather this selection somewhere around, you know, 15%. Adjustment panel, hue saturation brightness to the entire layer. This one, you might want to shift the hue a little bit more and really up the brightness and the saturation. This is going to give you some really cool, like almost sun uh, effect on your leaves. And the last little thing you can do is to add some splatters. And sorry here, I hit the camera with my head, so sorry for shaking. But to add some splatters, you just create a new layer, kind of above your color, but below your detail layer. This layer, you rename it to splatters, and you change the blending mode to linear burn. So here you have a few options. If you have the watercolor brushes, go ahead and select the splatter brush. Otherwise, if you go in the spray paint, you have two options that are not super good but could be okay you can see here they're not great but if you don't have the watercolor brushes again it's better than nothing i think so if you do have the watercolor brushes just pick the splatter brush go back to your pink color and just add some splatters so that is optional for sure if splatters are not your thing just just call it done <laughs> but i i think they help the piece kind of come together in a really nice way and just fill in some of the blank space and make everything look super nice, super cool, and just a bit more effortless in a way as well. So there you go. This was how to paint watercolor cherry blossom in Procreate. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up because it really does help the channel. If you want to check out the brushes that I use, it will be linked in the description below. And I would love to see what you guys create. So make sure to share the results with me either on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And before you leave, don't forget to subscribe because I put out new videos just like this one every week. I'll see you soon.